Hi, it's Kate here with Skeena Wild Conservation Trust with a fisheries update for late August 2025. In this video, we'll talk about the salmon and steelhead returns to the Skeena, Nass and other North Coast systems, as well as some fisheries information and environmental conditions on the North Coast. It feels like summer's just flown by and there's a lot of information to share. So let's get started. But first, a quick reminder that if you are going fishing, please check current regulations before doing so. The current in-season forecast for Skeena Sockeye is a return to Canada of just under 1.7 million, which is well below the pre-season forecast of 2.7 million and below the long-term average of about 2 million. Based on average run timing, over 97% of the run has passed the Taiyi at this time, with just under 1.5 million Sockeye to date. The difference between the forecast of return to Canada of about 1.7 million and the nearly 1.5 million past the Taiyi is because the return to Canada forecast includes sockeye that are caught in various fisheries in Canadian waters before the Taiyi test fishery. Marine commercial fisheries targeting sockeye, both gillnet and seines, were open through the first week of August, which is peak run timing for wild Babine River sockeye as well as Skeena steelhead. The diminishing catch and participation in the fishery into August is simply not worth the negative impacts to Skeena chum, coho and steelhead, which are all caught incidentally and all of which are below average this year. The openings also directly contradict goals to conserve and rebuild wild babine sockeye, which have experienced a decline in abundance of over 90%. In recent years, sockeye returning to the babine make up about 90% of the total Skeena sockeye return. And keep in mind that most of those are enhanced sockeye returning to the Pinkett and Fulton spawning channels. Babine fence operations started in mid-July and approximately 900,000 large sockeye and an additional about 18,000 jack sockeye have been counted through the fence to date. When compared to the Taiyi, sockeye at the fence have been lower than expected so far this year, which could mean an overestimation at the Taiyi or a longer than expected migration between Taiyi and the Babine fence or possibly a greater proportion of non-babine sockeye than 10% this year. Fishing for sockeye has now started on Babine Lake near the Fulton and Pinkett Enhancement Facilities and Lake Babine Nation has chosen to prioritize the conservation of wild sockeye and no longer harvest their commercial allocation at the fence, where the nation has harvested sockeye for more than 8,000 years, but where both wild and enhanced sockeye would be caught and instead to fish selectively at terminal locations targeting enhanced sockeye only. Skeena Chinook returns were above average compared to recent years, which have been in the range of 20 to 30,000, which is good to see, but still below the long-term average and well below the historical average of around 100,000. The pre-season forecast was an estimated return of about 26,600 Chinook, and the final estimated run size will be calculated post-season in the fall by DFO. Pink salmon remain abundant in the Skeena this year, but it appears that the return peaked early and is now declining. Pinks have been abundant in both marine and in-river fisheries as well, and started showing up at the Babine Fence right at the end of July and start of August, also indicating an early return, with about 70,000 pink salmon counted at the fence so far. It's looking like a relatively poor year for Skeena coho, which are tracking below average at this time and similar to, but slightly lower than last year. And Skeena chum, which have been very depressed for several decades, appeared somewhat promising early in the season above the recent average, but have tapered off and are now tracking below the recent average, but slightly above last year. This might indicate an early return for chum as well this year, but time will tell. The Skeena steelhead return, which also started off looking okay early in the season, is now looking very poor, with about 10,300 steelhead estimated past Taiyi, currently ranking as the ninth lowest year out of 70 years. And the province of BC is estimating a final return past Taiyi of about 12,000 steelhead for this year, which is before they face in-river fisheries. Six of the past seven years have seen very low returns, below thresholds identified for conservation concern. We have been very busy advocating for stronger protections for steelhead in all fisheries with both DFO and the province this year and have been extremely disappointed with the lack of action from both. In the past few years, water temperatures and flows have reached concerning levels during the month of August. But thanks to the cool and wet spell we saw throughout much of the region this month, on top of the relatively cool and late spring, 
it hasn't been as much of a concern this year. Water levels on the Skeena have been near average for most of the season, and water temperatures declined over much of August, but are now on the rise, and that is expected to continue with the warm weather ahead. Water levels at the Babine Fence have been below average this season, but not as low as last year, which was a very concerning year for drought and pre-spawn mortality. Similar to the Skeena, water temperature declined over early August, but is now increasing again, and some tributaries are reported to be above 20 degrees already. Stream temperatures will likely be rising over the next week, which could have negative consequences for salmon in those systems. Moving to the NAS, with the exception of pink salmon, NAS salmon and steelhead returns are generally below average this year. For sockeye, there is growing concern that the sockeye are either late in reaching the spawning grounds or that earlier estimates of abundance have overestimated the size of the run. The current in-season return to Canada is for about 437,000 NAS sockeye this year, which is below the 30-year average of about 600,000. However, the return to the fish wheels is slightly above the 30-year average, with nearly 350,000 estimated as of August 24th. NAS Chinook returns are very poor this year again, consistent with recent years, with just under 11,000 Chinook returning to the fish wheels to date, which is well below the conservation target of 15,000. And today, only 37 large sockeye have been counted at the Mesiadin Fishway, compared to a historical average of over 200. NAS Coho are also tracking below average, with an in-season estimated return of about 96,000, below the 30-year average of 182,000. NAS Steelhead are similarly tracking below average, with just under 7,000 estimated past the fish wheels at this time, and an in-season projected run size of 12,000. It's an abundant year for pinks in the NAS, with an estimated run size smaller than in 2023, but above average for an odd year. And for NAS Chum, the in-season forecast of 43,000 is well below the pre-season forecast and below the 30-year average of 59,000. More detailed information on NAS salmon returns and fisheries catch can be found in the recent update from Greg Taylor, linked in the caption to this video. Water levels in the NAS have mostly been near average this season and above average for much of August thanks to the rains, but have now settled down again. Water temperatures also benefited from the cooler weather in August, but now are above average at the Fish Wheels, Mesiadin Fishway, and the Quinnegeese Weir. In Area 6, there are reports from the Charter Patrolmen of excellent pink escapements relative to the brood year. Similar to the Skeena, their timing was earlier than usual. Chum returns, on the other hand, are looking poor relative to the brood year. Thank you so much, as always, for watching this video. The information I've shared comes from Fisheries and Oceans Canada, First Nations fisheries programs, in particular the Nishka, Gitniao, and Lake Babine Nation, as well as the province of BC and Environment Canada. We'll have another update to wrap up the season in a few weeks. And as always, please reach out to us with any questions at info at